Here we're going to look at a nice number theory problem from the Irish Mathematical Olympiad. So this is from the 2009 version and it is question three. So our goal is to find all positive integers n such that n to the 8th plus n plus 1 is a prime number. So before we get into this, I want to do two rounds of hints, one round of pretty small hints, and then one round of kind of big hints, which may almost give the problem away. So that's why I don't want to give those all at once. So for my small hints, so the first one is that the answer is just probably zero to three values of n. And this is generally the case whenever you're asked to find all positive integers satisfying some condition. Usually there are only a few or maybe none at all. And then the next one, well, that's not really a hint because if you want to find out that this thing is prime or not, then you probably want to factor it and thus show its composite at least some of, some of the time. So my second hint is to try and factor n to the eighth plus n plus one. And you can do that brute force or you can do that using a trick which the bigger hint will lead to. So the next little hint is to look at the exponents modulo something. So maybe we can like simplify this thing into some simpler polynomial if we look at the exponents mod blank. Okay, so now maybe I'll clean this up and we'll look at some bigger hints. Now we're ready for some bigger hints. So my first bigger hint is that if omega is an nth root of unity, in other words, it's an nth root of one, and we actually know what it looks like if it's an nth root of one, we know it is of the form e to the two pi i over m times k, where here k is in the set zero, one, all the way up to m minus one. So notice there are exactly m roots of one. And these are obviously happening in the complex numbers. This is happening in the unit circle in the complex plane. And so if omega is an mth root of one, then it is a root of this polynomial with integer coefficients. So f of x equals x to the, that should be m minus one. And notice that polynomial factors like x minus one times x to the m minus 1 plus x to the m minus 2 all the way down to plus x plus 1. And then the really important thing right here is happening in yellow and that is if omega is not equal to 1, well that means it is not a root of this portion of the product, then it must be a root of the other portion of the product. In other words, omega to the m minus 1 plus omega to the m minus 2 all the way down to omega plus 1 equals 0. Then the next thing that I want to say is that, again, if omega is an nth root of 1, then omega to the a equals omega to the b, if and only if a is congruent to b mod m. And this is actually pretty easy to see. So notice that if a is congruent to b mod m, that means that m divides a minus b, which tells us that a minus b equals m times r, where r is some natural number. Great. But then that tells us that omega to the a minus b equals omega to the m to the r using exponent rules. But then omega to the m is 1, so that means omega to the a minus b is equal to 1. But that equation is exactly equivalent to this one right here. So we just proved one direction, but the other direction is similar. Okay, so now that we're armed with this small hint and this big hint, let's go ahead and clean this up and we'll look at the solution. So hopefully those hints were helpful. Now we're going to look at a full solution. So the first thing that I want to do is set f of x equal to the polynomial version of our setup over there where we can think about x being any complex number. So we, here we have this is x to the 8 plus x plus 1. And then inspired by our hints, we want to think about those exponents modulo something and pick a root of unity that will make this simplify quite a bit. And now let's notice that if omega is a third root of unity, so for example, we could take omega to be e to the two pi i over three. So it's a third root of unity, which is not equal to one. Then, from our second hint, we see that that is uh, 
the same thing as saying omega squared plus omega plus one equals zero. But then also omega to the eight is equal to omega to the two power. In other words, omega squared. And that is from the last part of our big hint because eight is congruent to two modulo three. And whenever, we're, whenever you're working with roots of unity, in this case, third roots of unity, your exponents are being calculated modulo three in this case. Okay, so now let's go ahead and notice that if we take f of omega, we get omega to the eight plus omega plus one. But like we just observed, omega to the eight is the same thing as omega squared. So here we have omega squared plus omega plus one. But now that's gonna be equal to zero. But now what we notice is that omega is simultaneously a root of f of x. Let's just recall that's x to the eight plus x plus one and x squared plus x plus one. But what that tells us is that f of x must be equal to x squared plus x plus one times g of x. Great. And so that follows from maybe like the fundamental theorem of arithmetic, where we can talk about the roots of some polynomials. Now all we have to do is calculate this polynomial g of x. And we'll do that by using polynomial long division, but we're running out of room, so uh, let's get rid of that. So on the last board, we defined this polynomial f of x, which was x to the eight plus x plus one. And then we surmised via thinking about primitive roots of unity. And in this case, we're thinking about third roots of unity that the polynomial x squared plus x plus one divides f of x. So in other words, we can write f of x as x squared plus x plus one times g of x, where that is some other polynomial. Now we need to calculate g of x, and we're gonna do that with polynomial long division. So in other words, we want to divide x squared plus x plus one into x to the eight plus x plus one. And notice I've left a big gap there for the x to the seven plus x to the six plus x to the fifth, and so on and so forth terms. So notice the first thing that we need to do is multiply by x to the sixth. And we do that because we see that x to the sixth times x squared is x to the eight. So that's gonna give us x to the eight here plus x to the seven plus x to the six. So that's just from distributing the x to the sixth onto all of those terms. But now what we need to do is subtract that just like we're doing long division with polynomials and bring down the remainder. So here we have minus x to the seven minus x to the six. We'll bring those down plus x plus one. And now we keep going. So what do we need to multiply by x squared plus x plus one in order to achieve a leading term of minus x to the seven? So that is going to be minus x to the fifth. Okay, great, but now that is going to give us a minus x to the seven, minus x to the sixth, minus x to the fifth down there. Now we need to group those together and subtract them. So that's gonna have the effect of these guys canceling. And then this minus sign will turn into a plus. So our remainder at this stage is x to the fifth plus x plus one. And we need to keep going. So what do we need to multiply by x squared to get x to the fifth? So we need to multiply x cubed. So here we have plus x cubed. So that's gonna give us an x to the fifth down here, plus an x to the fourth, and then plus an x cubed. Again, we'll group that and subtract. And that's gonna give us minus x to the fourth, minus x cubed, plus x plus one. Good. So now uh, just following the same thing, we're gonna multiply by negative x squared. So multiplying by negative x squared will give us minus x to the fourth, minus x cubed, and then minus x squared. So now grouping and subtracting here, we'll see that these two terms cancel, these two terms cancel, and then we have a positive x squared left over. So we have x squared, plus x plus one. But now we're done because that's exactly what we're taking the quotient by. We're taking it by x squared plus x plus one. So we have plus one here. So what that tells us 
is that our g of x uh, can be replaced with x to the sixth minus x to the fifth plus x cubed minus x squared plus one. Okay, great. So now let's go ahead and get rid of this long division and work towards the end. So on the last board, we built this factorization of polynomials. So we have x to the 8 plus x plus 1 equals x squared plus x plus 1 times x to the 6th minus x to the 5th plus x cubed minus x squared plus 1. Now what we want to notice is that if we take f of 1, we'll get 1 to the 8th plus 1 plus 1 equals 3, which is a prime number. Great. And so that works because if we plug in f of 1 here, we get 3 for this term and then 1 for this term. So we have a factorization of the number 3, but it factors into 3 times 1. But the other thing that we want to notice is if n is strictly bigger than 1, so in other words, n is bigger than or equal to 2, then we have n to the eighth is strictly bigger than n squared. So that's pretty easy to see. But then from that, it follows that n to the eight plus n plus one is strictly bigger than n squared plus n plus one, which tells us that we have a factorization n to the eight plus n plus one into n squared plus n plus one times n to the 6 minus n to the 5 plus n cubed minus n squared plus 1. Then finally, noticing that this thing is always bigger than 1 will tell us that this term right here is bigger than 1. Well, that's just what we said. And then the inequality given right here would allow us to divide both sides by this polynomial n squared plus n plus 1 and tell us that this polynomial is also bigger than 1. So what we've done is we've factored n to the 8th plus n plus 1 into two numbers, and those are two natural numbers because of how they are combinations of natural numbers, and each of those is bigger than 1. In other words, this is a composite for all n bigger than or equal to 2. So let's go ahead and write that down. So n to the 8 plus n plus 1 is composite for all n bigger than or equal to 2. And that's a good place to stop.